Hey guys, my name is Tom. In this video, I am going to show you how to find the cumulative distribution function of a binomial random variable. So this is a common exercise in a lot of uh, introductory statistics and probability courses. Let's take a look. Um, <coughs> in a previous video, I have derived what you see in front of you now, but I'll go over it for about a minute. So what you have is the following. Find the probability distribution of boys and girls in a family with three kids. X then is the number of boys. This is our random variable. Uh, we know that this is a binomial random variable because you either have a boy or a girl, so the probability is fixed. The number of trials, meaning in this case the number of kids, is also known to be 3. Okay. And then you're assuming that from kid to kid to kid is we have independence. So if you have a boy or a girl on the first, it means nothing about the gender of the second. Okay. Then you apply the basic definition of the binomial, so the probability that x is 0, meaning 0 boys, is 3 choose 0, 1 half 0 to the 0 times a half cubed, which is 1 eighth. And then you go through the rest of these steps, as I'm showing you here. All right, this means 3 boys, 2 boys, 1 boy. These are the associated probabilities. Then what you might do is draw an x-axis, mark the possible values for the random variable x, number of boys, either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Draw little stems to mark the probabilities. Okay, so this is just the probability function. Now we're going to take a look at the cumulative distribution function. So we need this as a prerequisite for deriving the next step. So let's take a look at what we have. The CDF in this case will be a step function. So I'll take this aside and refer to it. So this is what we are going to have. When you look here, you can tell that to the left of zero there's no probability, right? You cannot have minus one boy, for example. Which means the following. Let's draw the CDF. So draw y axis as always, draw an x axis as always. I would mark everything in terms of eights. And how do we know? Because if you look at the probability function over here, you see it's a half, an eighth, a three eighths, three eighths, and an eighth. So that's how you know. And I will let two spaces be. 1 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, perfect. Okay. This is an eighth. This will be two of those. This will be three eighths. This will be four eighths. This will be five. This will be six. This will be seven. And this will be eight eighths, which of course is just another way of writing the number one. Okay, just as 4 eighths is another way of writing number 1 half, okay, and so on. Um, so, here we are. This is our x. There we are. So, as before, what we want to do is mark the possible values of the variable. Now, here, I mark these in terms of 8s. But on this axis, I will mark everything in terms of 1s. So, this will be 1. 2, 3, 4. And of course, this is 0. So, if you refer to this previous plot, you see that on this plot, the probability of 0 is something, but anything to the left of uh, 0 is, is 0, right? There's no probability that you will have minus 1 boy. Okay, there's no. <clears throat> so that means that we have the following situation. Between negative infinity and zero, there is no probability accumulated. So that is zero. So we will mark that as follows. Dr thicken the line up to zero and mark a hole at zero. Okay. The CDF is taken to be continuous from the right. 
and then at zero, if you look carefully at the probability function, at zero there's a jump of an eighth. So you jump by one eighth this way. And that's solid. And then up through one, there are no other jumps. So you mark a steady line over to the one. Then at the one, you mark a hole. And then at one, you have a jump of even if you look at the table here, you have a jump of 3 eighths. So you've got that marked that here, right? So this is 1, 2, 3. So mark that as a solid dot. And then draw a line over to the 2. And add the 2, mark a hole. And then again, add the 2, there's a jump of another 3 eighths. So once again, count up. One, two, three, solid dot, draw a line over from the two to the three, add the three, mark a hole, and lastly, <clears throat> what we have, of course, is <clears throat> as we accumulate all of these values, the last possible one, of course, is 8 eighths, right? The maximum you can have. So that means at 3, you see there's a jump of 1 eighth again, right? So you leap up by 1 eighth, make that solid, and then draw a line suggesting positive infinity that way just as this comes over here from negative infinity. So this is the CDF, the cumulative distribution function of our variable, which in this case is the number of boys within a family of three kids. Now let's write the piecewise defined function that you have to usually write to accompany the graph of uh, this kind. So let's take a look at what we have. And for that we use instead of little f, as is common with just probability functions, we use big F. So big F is the cumulative distribution function. Yeah, you use it, you know, write a big curly brace. Let's mark it. It's zero for x between negative infinity and zero. Okay, no probability to the left of zero. Then between zero and one, it's equal to one eighth. So we mark one eighth. Then between one and two, it's equal to four eighths. So you mark four eighths. Then between 2 and 3 is equal to 7 eighths, so you mark 7 eighths. And lastly, for everything to the right of 3, it's equal to 1. But you can also write as 8 over 8 if you like. You can reduce the 4 eighths into a half if you like. So that means x is greater than or equal to positive 3. Okay. So this is the graph of the cumulative distribution function. This is the piecewise defined function that comes with it. We read this as the cumulative distribution function. We use a big F to represent that in general. This function here, whenever you draw it, Make sure that the dot on the left like this is solid and the one on the right is open, the way these are, okay? This function is said to be continuous from the right. So perhaps, if, unless you've taken calculus, that language may not be very meaningful, but in pictures it means solid dot, solid dot, solid dot, solid dot. The ones under it are open, 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 and open. There you go. So that's it. That's the whole exercise. Thank you for watching.